Today's episode is brought to you by the letter M. Hello, and thanks for joining me today. Well, today we're going to do some the first cuts in a new log. This is a fresh red oak log that I felled about a day ago. And I'm taking very light cuts on this. I'm getting a feel for the mill and also taking care to save as much of the lumber as possible. The overall goal is to save as big of a chunk out of the middle as possible. I want the cant to be something around 5 by 9 or 6 by 9 because I need to cut it into two 3 by 8 chunks. One thing I'm careful about, about is I'm cutting the this log down just uh, to the point where that last sleeper support, um, it's still resting on it. I want to make sure that it's got enough support. Uh, one thing I do need to add um, to this setup is another clamping position. There's only one clamp and it's toward the other end of the mill. So I need to edit that and or modify that and put another clamping one on this end. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna make a pneumatic one. I've already been working on some plans so that at least the one on this end, you'll have one at the screw clamp and then the other one, I can flip a lever and it will it will slam in with you know, a certain amount of pressure and it'll just hold st steady. Because a large log, especially when you're first starting, wants to roll. Now, I've got backstops. You'll see these little metal supports on the right of the video and they do a pretty good job. But you really have to have enough, another set of jaws on the front pushing against them to keep that log from rolling. You put a lot of force on it, especially a larger log, you're farther away from the, the center of the device, you put more torque on the log to make it spin with that blade as it's cutting through there. So there's, I'm still learning and I will be improving this and I'll bring you along. Um, I did realize after this first pass that the inside limit, the inside dimension on this mill is 24 inches and this fork is sticking out too far. So I've had to come back in and lob that off. I need to take more care in, in bucking my logs first before I put them on the mill, but I'm learning as I go.
all I'm trying to do right now is clean up one side. Get one side that's mainly cleaned up so that I can turn it and start working on getting this into a square log instead of a round log. One thing I've noticed is how the whole saw rig tries to shimmy left to right um, as I'm cutting. A lot of that is the force of that saw blade, uh, the resistance of the, you know, as it's cutting the log, and it sets up a little harmonic in the uh, in the saw itself. And with the saw all the way cranked up as high as it is now, there's not very much room to put a brace. But most of your cuts will be lower; the saw won't be as as high. And here I'm trying to turn the log the wrong way. It would be nice to put the square side that I just made up against the uprights. And that was my goal. But it's going to be, if I do that, the way this little fork sticks out, I'm going to do that to cut the fork some more. Or it's going to really, it's going to be hard to do because it's going to lift the log up and the log's going to be pretty high. And I eventually decide just to flip it around and, uh, put the square side out. It actually makes a better clamping surface, but I have to put a piece of scrap in because I don't don't want to mess up any lumber that I you know don't want to put too deep of a hole. This screw clamp works pretty good, but it's got a point on it, and if I dig in too much, I might dig into some wood that I'll need since this, I'm trying to save quite a bit of a lumber out of this.
Thank you.